Now we'll do a tap. Uh, what I want, because this bolt here is a 10 mil or 1.5 pitch. So I'll go 10 mil, 1.5 pitch, and I'll get the taper tap. Because this is going to be a through tap, I don't need to worry about um, the secondary. So I'll just, just put all the protective bits in there. I will tell you, it is easier to um, cut taps on square things because you've got a flat surface. What I'm going to do is cut that tap on this cylindrical surface in here. So we're going to have to make a couple of jigs up, which we will do. Working tap sizes out. I better get a wrench there, I suppose. If you're um, if you're cutting a die or cutting a thread on a bolt, and it's a 10 mil bolt, then you're using 10 mil stock. If it's an 8 mil bolt, you use 8 mil. If it's a 5 8 you use 8 or 5 8 stock. So that's not an issue. But when it comes to cutting taps, there is a little bit of mathematics involved or you can end up too loose or too um, tight. So I'll give, give you the equation now and we'll work it out. I have got, where's my phone? If you want to know where I get this information from, it's this little book here called The Engineer's Black Book. Um, basically for metal work, but it does have good stuff in there as well on drill sizes and taps and what have you. But the equation is the drill size equals the, got to get it right now, the percentage of thread you want times the pitch divide by a known quantity, which in this case is 76.98. Okay, so <laughs> I know that sounds confusing, but I'm looking for a 75% contact of thread. Uh, if you go for 100%, you'll find you won't really get it in because it's too tight. So 75% in timber I find is quite um, acceptable. And I've got a 1.5 mil pitch. So we'll do the calculations. I want 75% contact. That times that by the pitch, which is 1.5. That gives me 112.5. Divide that by 76.98, that equals that. Now if you round that up, so it's 1.46, I'd round it up to 1.5, clear that. Now I've got a 10 mil bolt, so that's 10, and I minus whatever that was, 1.5, 1.5, that equals 10.5. So that means, sorry, that equals 8.5, not 10.5, 8.5. So I'll go over to the drill press, I'll get an 8.5 mil bit, and we will drill it in here. But, as I said, it's cylindrical. What can we do? Let's make a jig up. Got an off-cut there. It's um, off-cut from the B-boxes that I make. And what I want to do is put a V-channel, 45 degrees, either side, so it'll give me a 90 degree. So this can sit in there nicely. There's a few ways I can do it. Um, I could use a framers guillotine, which I've got. You could do it with a hand saw if you wanted. But if you've got a table saw, this is by far the quickest way. Okay, so let's go over the table saw and we'll set it up. We'll cut this out. And then what I think we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a fence or something there because again, that, where's the straight edge? That is not level. This actually tapers away. So if I had it flat, it's going to be at an angle. So we'll just build that up and I'll show you what we'll do there. And it will be okay. So the saw has been tilted to 45. And I'll just line this face up with that 45 as close as I can. That's pretty good there. Now 
and turn it on and I'm going to slice all the way through and it should be to about there, that mark there. Dust extractor on, saw on. Door off. Dusty off so you can hear me. Wait until that blade stops spinning before you reach over it. Always a good practice. All right. So now, close enough to that line to there. So what I've got to do now is turn it over and draw the other line I want in here. And then set the fence up so the outside of the blade is actually on the outside of that line. The outside of the blade is on the inside of the line, I'm sorry. Oh, I think that's going to be good enough for our purposes. Dusty on. Saw on. Be careful that bit will come back at you. Saw off. Dusty off. Saw blade, take that away. Take that away. Normally that does have a protector on it, but for you to see what I'm doing, I took it off. Now that sits nicely in there. But as I said, it's got a slight taper in it, so that isn't going to be true to the face. So back to the bench, and I'll show you how we can fix that. Okay, so all I'm going to do with this is nail that onto there, and then I can put a couple of nails in there, which will hold that in the right position. Okay, so I'm just going to put this on here. It's on there nice and firm. And we just put one, oh, where are we going to have it? I'll have it here. So I'm going to put one to the side and one on the other side. Okay, now that has held that in there. And you can see there, just a little, it's not quite touching because there's a taper, but this face is square. If you want, you could put a little wedge down there, but I don't, I don't think that needs it, to tell you the truth. So I'm not gonna bother about it. All right, now I want to get this so it's in center. And a couple of ways you can do that. I'll show you the easiest way. Oh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually have this in a um, drill press, uh, a vise on the drill press. So I'm going to put another piece along here that I can mount into the drill press itself. If your jaws open wide enough, you could put the whole lot in there. So let me just get a little bit of something. Gonna nail that onto there. It's not coming off. And there we have it. A nice jig so we can accurately drill the hole there. So let's go over the drill press. And to find where the top is, if you put a, a ruler down and put your drill press your drill bit onto the ruler, you'll see it's level. If it's not level, then you're not in the center. I'll show you. So we move this out this way, and we put that ruler there, put the drill bit on it. You see how it's picking up on this end? 
Whereas if you bring them back, see how the ruler is leveling out? Once you've got it level, that means you're actually looking at the middle of where it is you want to drill. Hey, that was a free tip. And away we go. And now I'm into the void. That's it. Bring your drill bit out. Now, while we've got it set up in the drill, it's a really good idea to start your tap off while you're here. So take the drill bit out and we'll go and get the tap we need. It's a 10 by one and a half. Actually put it in the drill chuck. Tighten it up. And then bring it down to the hole you've just drilled. And by hand, turn the drill chuck, as well as feeding down on here. You're only getting it started. And once you feel it start to bite, you know you're starting to cut thread. And you can actually see the bits of swarf coming out. <sighs> okay, so now what I'm gonna do is loosen the chuck, take that out of the way, Go back to the bench and we'll fit this uh, wrench on it and away we go. So we've got it started already. Now if you want, we might as well, we'll put it in the vise. Get the wrench. It's H&T Gordon vise by the way. Get the wrench, put it on top, screw it up. Now we've already started, we've got to maintain downward pressure and turning at the same time. If you don't put enough pressure, what happens particularly in timber, the tap won't go down and it'll strip the threads out you've already cut. It's a nice lot of downward pressure. And slowly does it. And once you've got it started in the drill press like that, you notice I'm using one hand. It's easy for me to push down and turn rather than doing that. We've already started, so that's the main problem. With cutting taps is getting a good start. Now I'm not too sure how we're going, so I'm gonna knock this end plate off Okay, now you can see the tap is just starting to come through. That's the tapered part of the tap. So I might just put that in, in here now. and We'll just do it this way. Keep going. You can see the tap coming through. So I should have a bit of water on there, but I thought it will support it from the underneath. And we're nearly all the way through. See that there? And it's important that we've gone past the tapered part of the tap. Now we're cutting full thread. If we still had part of the taper in the thread, then I'd go to that secondary taper I was talking about and cut the thread all the way through. That's your taper tap there. You can see the threads have a taper before they start to bite. This is a secondary tap, it's got a very slight taper, but generally, if you're not doing a through thread, you use this one first and then that one. Now, this isn't a through, true through thread because it's not coming out the other side. So all I do now is just untwist it this way. We've got quite a nice thread. This timber I just tapped, by the way, is um, coachwood 
But if you've got a timber that's quite fragile, what you can do is put a layer of super glue in there, let it dry, and then put that tap in again, and it'll reinforce the fibers in the thread. So let's see how we went at the end of all that. The bit we just tapped fits over there. Now this screws in there. And there you go, nice and tight. Loosen it, you can move it, you can increase the height if you want, you can lower it, you can turn it around. All done with a bit of ingenuity. So there you go. I hope that brought a new perspective to some of your woodworking. Um, it really made me sort of think beyond now I'm starting to do metalwork because I'm making the harps. It's uh, lovely to, to bring in uh, skills from another level to complement the skill set you already have in the particular discipline or medium you're working with. That's how we cut the thread. And if you'd like to know how I made the bolt, I've got an in-depth, step-by-step video of how I did it right there. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, it's been, well, three videos, really. I was going to do it as one, but then I decided to break up into separate compartments so uh, you know if you're interested in the tapping size and just a reminder that tap and die set is primarily for metal and it works extremely well in metal I've used it up in the metal shed but I thought it'd be interesting to do a crossover into woodworking and see how you can utilize tools from another discipline or another trade to enhance what it is you do so until we meet again this is Steve Full in the shed door down saying remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other, and I look forward to having your company at the workbench, in the workshop, again, very, ah, very, very soon. I've got a bad back. <laughs> Till then, look after yourself, take care, God bless, bye for now. The Vivo 110 piece tap and die set, $68.99, check the coupon below. If the coupon's not there, it means um, the, the special's finished, but still check them out.